What's up guys, it's your boy Big Bro Dre and welcome to my channel. Today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys about some no-fail tips that'll help you survive your first military deployment. Let's get to the video. What's up, people? If this is your first time at my channel, my name is Big Bro Dre. I give military advice and I give life advice on my YouTube channel. If that's the type of content that you're interested in, please make sure you smash that uh, subscribe button and make sure you uh, smash that notification button as well so you can know when my content is dropping, all right? If you're one of my loyal subscribers, I want to let you guys know that we are currently at 1,532 subscribers. <laughs> And it's all because of you guys and your support. So I just want to let you guys know that I appreciate all your support. I appreciate all the comments, the likes, the letters, everything you guys do to support me and my channel and make sure my content keeps flowing, okay? Now, today's video is about something that I know a whole lot about. Military deployments. I've been deployed four times and I also did a 14-month deployment in Korea, if you want to count that as a deployment. I don't really count it, though. But I've been deployed exactly four times all over the Middle East, from Syria to Afghanistan to Iraq to Kuwait to all different contingency operations for my duties as a uh, United States service member. My first deployment was in 2005, and my last one was a few, uh, some months ago. I can't say uh, for sure because of operational security, but it wasn't long ago. It was in the year 2020. So... I can give you guys a whole lot of tips that I picked up, and that's what I'm gonna do in this video right here. The very first tip that I have is preparation, all right? A wise man once said, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail, all right? First thing you need to do before you even think about deploying is make sure that you got your affairs in order at home. That means making sure your car is good to go, knowing where you're gonna store your car, knowing where you're gonna store your clothes, Knowing where your where your family's gonna be when you when you leave, if you have a family, if you don't have a family, maybe you have pets. Knowing who's gonna keep your pets, these are all things that you need to know at least three to six months before you before you deploy. All right. Usually the military will tell you in some time when you're gonna go, so you'll have time to prep and make sure those things are good to go. Okay, one piece of legal documentation that is gonna assist you with preparing for a deployment is called a power of attorney. Now, there are two ways that you can do a power of attorney. You can do what's called the general power of attorney. With this, you go to the legal office and they're gonna give you a document to fill out and you pretty much just say, you check all the blocks that give people, some one person total authorization to do everything on your behalf while you are away. Now, I recommend against that unless you have complete and total trust with this person. Maybe it's your wife for 10 years, or maybe it's your, you know, your your husband for, for 15 years or it's your mom or something like that. But I recommend against it if you don't have that person that you can trust fully with, with your life. So that's the first way you can do it. The second way that you can do it is called a special power of attorney. What a special power of attorney does is it gives you authorization, but it only gives the person authorization for special things. A special authorization may be uh, managing your car or managing your home or managing your property or managing your bank account, the bank account that you use for mon uh, monetary stuff or managing something special specific that you specifically need them to do where it's not giving them general authorization to manage your whole entire your, your whole entire life. OK, so that's the one that I recommend. Um, most of the time I, I, you know, I provide power of attorneys for my spouse and ensure that she has everything that she needs to get done that she needs to do while I'm gone, she's able to do it. So I recommend a special. Some people do the general, but that's it's all your choices, point of view, or how you feel about that person that you're giving the authorization to. Another thing a lot of people don't think about before a deployment is their actual medical, their medical stuff. So like, let's say in the States, you take a certain amount of medicine. Well, when you deploy, you're going to need to bring that medicine with you because sometimes you may be at what's called a forward operating base where it's big and there's a lot. Uh, there's hospitals and clinics and stuff. Or you may be at an outpost where it's just you and your team or you and your men or maybe one, one medical person and they might have to ship medicine to you. So you want to make sure that you got your medicine, that any, any medicinal needs, even glasses, glasses or stuff like that you need to, to see or to survive, 
You want to make sure you bring that stuff with you because you may not be able to get that shit when you get to your actual, to your place of duty. Um, for instance, I was stationed in my first uh, deployment. I was in an area where they didn't even have a, a, a exchange. So I couldn't even get toothpaste. So that was one of the, I had to get that stuff shipped in and then we had to go drive a certain amount of time to get from where we was going to get medicine. Uh, guys got hurt and couldn't even get painkillers because we were so far away from civilization during our mission that we couldn't get those things. So manage your time and manage your priorities properly and ensure that you have those things before you deploy. So if you wear glasses, bring your damn glasses. If you take medicine, make sure you got your medicine, everything you need to sustain yourself at least for 60 days, okay? Uh, more than 60 days, you, 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 you'll you find time to get that stuff if you really need it uh, after 60 days. So just make sure you have that for at least 60 days, all right? I touched on family and, and uh, your spouse earlier, but another thing I wanna touch on is a family care plan. So in the military, uh, they make you fill out a form, it's called a family care plan, and it's pretty much just saying, hey, Who's gonna keep my child when I'm deployed? Let's say you're a single parent, you don't have a spouse, or you, you know, your 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 child's father or mother isn't in the picture. So you need to have a plan for somebody who's gonna take care of your child. Essentially, that same person is probably gonna be your emergency contact. So you need to ensure that they know just as much as you know about your child, because you could be gone from between six months to fifteen months. I've done I've done it between nine months and fifteen months on deployments. Thank God I, I had a spouse that was here and I didn't have to worry about, you know, developing a family child, family care plan because I wasn't a single father. But a lot of times that becomes a problem. Not only, you know, financially or physically, you can't see the kid. It, it becomes an emotional issue where you can't focus on your mission because you're worried about what your kids are doing now. Who's taking care of your kids? So you want to make sure you have that family care plan set up before you even, three to six months before you even think about deploying, you want to make sure your family care plan is set. A lot of units will have you do that maybe a year or two out. Or if they find out you're a single parent, they'll have you do it when you enter into the unit. So you want to make sure you keep your family care plan updated so that your child is taken care of the right way while you're gone. All right, so that's something good to look at as well. Now, I'm going to get a beef from my old heads about this one because when I first deployed back in 2005, you didn't have some of the amenities that you have now. Uh, we used to have to use the phone at a pay phone with a phone card and listening to explosions and stuff while we were talking on the phone to our, you know, significant others, our families, right? Now, these these guys have the opportunity to have communications and bring different things that are going to provide them with comfort when you deploy. So, for instance, if you're deploying now, it'll probably be a good idea to make sure you take your devices. So, if you have a tablet, take your tablet. If you have a laptop, take your laptop, take your gaming system if you like to play games because you're going to have some time, depending on your job, you're going to have a certain amount of downtime and you don't want to be idle in your downtime. You're already going to be missing your family, so you're going to want to find things to do that's going to take up your time. So if you have those things, bring them with you. Uh, I would say ensure you clean them and make sure you clean them before you, you leave because depending on where you go, some of the elements is going to tear your shit up. Like, if you take your game system to Kuwait and you have it in a tent, chances are the sand is going to get it and it destroy it. It happened to one of my Xboxes maybe I think in like 2008. So just make sure you probably care for your stuff, but take things with you to comfort yourself. Another small thing we probably don't think about a lot in terms of deployment is sleep. So you're going to be working. You're going to be working extremely hard. It's going to be six to 15 months of grueling, grinding it out, trying to complete whatever mission your job uh, requires you to do, right? At the end of the night, you're going to want to get a good night's sleep. So a lot of times when I would go deploy, I would leave my nice home bed with my thousand count spreadsheets, uh, my thousand count thread sheets, and I'll leave my nice comforter, the wool mink or whatever we got at home, right? And I'll go sleep in a in a twin with the hardest the hardest bed you ever felt in your life on these mushy pillows and these nasty yeah it's horrible so right so you want to bring stuff that's going to comfort you when you sleep so if you got one of those nice thermogenic pillows or uh, one thing that i bought when i when i deployed the last time was i bought a uh, the mattress covers 
but it's like a cushion. You lay on it, and then it helps with the helps your back support. And when you get my age, I'm I'm up in my middle thirties. And you get that age after being in the army so long, your body starts to feel like you're seventy five because you've been grinding since you, since eighteen. So it's tough for your body to 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 lay in that bed when it's hard and stuff like that. So you want to make sure you got a good pillow. Make sure you got a good blanket because it might be 80, 90 degrees in Kuwait, right? Or in Iraq. During the summers, it's 130. So you got to think at 80 degrees during the wintertime, that's cold for you because your body is not, is not used to going from 130 to 80 degrees. Not to mention the military pays pretty good money for air conditioners and ensure that soldiers are well taken care of as far as living uh, living environment. So you want to make sure that you got a good blanket because a lot of times they'll turn that, that uh, air conditioner up in the building because it's so damn hot outside. If it's 130 outside, you you can expect the air conditioner in the building at least be on 75. You keep, everybody, keep everybody cool and keep everybody from passing out. All right, so make sure you get some good stuff to sleep with. Another tip that I can use is, uh, you know, melatonin is a good thing to have if, you, if you're having trouble sleeping because a lot of times when you push into those environments, you're not used to sleeping with a bunch of people in the room. Or you're not used to hearing like explosions and stuff going on in the back. And I ain't trying to scare you, but these things happen. Man. They happen on a few deployments that I was on. So, I mean, you're going to be in environments that you're not used to. So, a lot of times, the best thing about your day might be your sleep. So, you want to make sure that your sleep is well taken care of. And last but not least for preparation is you want to prepare your mind, okay? Prepare your mind for what's about to come. Because when you go into these combat zones, it's going to be dangerous depending on where you are. Depending on your job, it's going to be dangerous. You're going to be put in situations that you're not used to being put in at home. Not to mention, you got to prepare yourself for the world to pretty much pass without you. When uh, back in, I think it was 2008, uh, I was deployed to a contingency environment in the Middle East. And you don't realize how much happens in 15 months. So my daughter was born and I, I was there for the birth, but I had to, I was on leave and I had to go back to uh, the deployment for an additional 13 months. And in that time, she grew a year. So I, ca I left holding a baby in my arm and I came back to a, a kid that was walking. So you got to understand that the world's going to pass you by and there are going to be some things you're going to miss. But at the end of the day, you're doing what you got to do to support who yourself or support your family. And if you, you know, you're doing it to fight for your country, that's what you signed up for. So prepare your mind for that. Another thing I would suggest before you go to these areas is to ensure that you learn some of the, uh, the uh, local languages. Like, for instance, when I went to, like, let's say Colombia, I learned some Spanish. Or if I went to... Uh, Arabian nations. I went to Saudi Arabia. I went to Dubai, Syria. I'll learn. I will learn at least the basic Farsi or Urdu or the basic Arabic language that is uh, uh, indigenous to that culture or that area that I'm in. If one thing is, it'll help you with is uh, when people know that you're trying to learn their language, that it shows that you're not disrespecting their culture. Another thing that it helps you with is prices when you go out in town and buy things. They don't give you what's called the gringo price because they try to they try to be more uh, susceptible to to helping you out when you when you learn the culture, and you learn the language, and you learn what's right in that area. So that's one thing I would say is in preparation is learn some of the local languages when you go to these places. It's gonna help you out a lot. Okay, the second part of my comprehensive guide is arrival. All right, so when you arrive to some of these places, especially deployments, you're going to be flying from the continental United States unless you deploy from Hawaii. Some of these flights are between 18 and 24 hours. So you're going to show up to this place tired. You're going to have a uniform on. It's going to be hot. It's going to, you're going to be around a whole bunch of grumpy ass people that are just ready to lay down and, and, and eat and sleep or whatever they got to do, right? One thing I got to tell you about I would say 99% of the countries that you're going to deploy to is please do not drink the water. All right. In the States, we used to go into the water fountain and just get in the cup, put it into the water fountain and drink in this tap. A lot of people don't. My wife, she don't drink tap. So I, I understand people that don't drink it. But for me, I, I mix my pre-workout with tap. I drink 
coffee with tap. I, I brush my teeth with tap. In some of these countries that you're going to deploy to, you don't even want to brush your teeth with tap water. So uh, they're going to provide water bottles for you on the deployment. The, the army's not, or the military is not going to have you in a deployment zone without water. So do not drink that damn water. If you drink the water, you're going to get sick. If you go and drink the water after watching this video and I told you not to drink the water, you deserve to be sick. So wherever you go that is not the United States or a developed nation like, like the UK or London or somewhere developed, please do not drink the water, okay? That's the first tip. That might be the most important one when you arrive into your deployment destination. I touched on this one in your preparation, but another tip is to learn the local customs and culture, okay? This is critical because I've been in a situation where I was with someone that we, we were going into a uh, priest's house. And this was in a province. I think we were in Baghdad province. And um, so when you go to in uh, Arabic culture or those cultures in the Middle East, when you go there and you and they they give you some food to eat, they present it to you. It's, it's, it's a nice it's a nice gesture of, of uh, faith and a nice gesture of hospitality. And they give you food to eat. You're supposed to take it. Well, I was with a gentleman, and there was a few of us, and we were all eating, and the guy offered us the food, and all of us took it except for one guy. He was like, nah, I'm not eating that shit. I, there's no way I'm eating it. And the family was offended by it. And you got to understand this type of situation we in. So we in full battle rattle. The families sitting around the living room with AK-47s. So it, you don't know what type of hostile environment that can turn into because you wanted to be all American and disrespect these people's culture. So another thing that I would say is learn the cultures, learn the customs, learn what's right and what's wrong in that. Because it, as Americans, we do things a lot different than other countries. For God's sakes, we use a whole different metric system than the rest of the world. We call football, American football, we call uh, football. And soccer, what everybody else in the world calls football, we call it soccer. So we do things a lot different than a lot of cultures and customs. So you want to learn other people's cultures, customs and cultures when you go to it, especially in a deployment zone because it's hostile. You, The smallest hint of disrespect could cause like a, a, a world crisis. Like you might cause like a national security uh, infraction. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to be the guy that gets shot up because you didn't learn the customs when you go in someone's house. All right. So learn the customs. All right. So this is a big one. This is a big one. And this is for my guys and my women. Listen, you're there to work. And no matter how hard your urges, emotions get to you, you ain't there to have sex. So one of the things that I got to say is when you're on a deployment, you are not there to have sex. I will tell you why. So, I was in a unit one time when I was deployed, and you know, people are gonna have sex. We're human beings, and people want to do stuff like that. Well, one of the young ladies that came to the deployment, she she uh, she was married, and she ended up having sex with another guy. She ended up getting pregnant, and they had to send her home. So the the other young lady that she replaced, I think she she didn't get pregnant. But she gave some guy some like disease and he let, it's like chlamydia or something nasty that he, he let like linger in his body and he didn't get, he didn't get the correct treatment for it. So he had to get some type of like medicine and surgery. It was real bad. So they ended up sending him to Germany to get all the surgery. It's, he was there for like six months. So I say that to say this, your small action might not mean nothing to you, but it's going to mean something to the mission. Because we just lost two people because of something simple like sex. Look, it sucks, man. You're going to be going for a long time, but you can do it. If you got a little bit of discipline, you can hold out for some time and, and not, you know, have sex with everybody you see. So my other tip for arrivals is try to refrain from sexual relations with people when you deploy. All right. All right. So countdowns. A lot of people do countdowns when they deploy. Listen, countdowns do not pass the time. All right. It might make it feel longer, to be honest. So just find, you should find something to do with your time. Find a hobby or find a, uh, a group. A lot of people have groups. Like I know when I was deployed this last time, they had like a salsa group, uh, you know, uh, consisted of mostly um, 
Latino uh, Americans and they came together and they started the salsa group. And they had like uh, a lot of the fraternities are out there, so you might run into your fraternities, your sororities, the, the Greek fraternities uh, from colleges, and the uh, Greek sororities. Uh, they also have the uh, the Masonic um, fraternity is there. A lot of the different military fraternities are also there. So if you're not like a a, a, a hermit. You don't want to become one on a deployment because it's going to depress you. If that's already your personality, you like being by yourself, then perfect. You can be by yourself as much as you want. But if you're not a hermit, you don't want to make yourself a hermit and use the deployment as an excuse or say, hey, I was deployed, so I wasn't able to deal with, interact with people because that's false. Uh, there are multiple things that you can do. Um, even the Army provides different uh, morale, welfare uh, events so people can come together. Uh, obviously, right now with the COVID going on, you're not going to be congregating in groups uh, for your safety. But when this thing is over and you're deployed, you're going to want to you're going to want to be with people. Uh, human beings are just personable creatures. Like we like to be around other people. So find something that you like to do, a hobby. If you play basketball, they have basketball leagues. If you play football, they have football leagues. If you're about training. There's always opportunities to train for your actual job. There are going to be so many people that have your job where you go. So uh, that goes without saying that, hey, listen, if you're not a hermit person, you don't like to be by yourself, make sure you find a group or find a hobby or find something you like to do to consume your time. Don't do the countdowns, man, because that's just going to make your time last a little bit longer. Now, another thing that's going to help you survive deployment is that you got to keep in mind that as a military, our job is to protect our country from enemies, foreign and domestic, right? So at the onset, you're going to be scared. But what, what I would tell you is be vigilant and be cautious, but don't be scared. You, you know that you're trained to do a specific job. So you go, you do your job, you do your job effectively, and you bring your ass home. So you don't, there's no reason to be scared if you know that you're trained to get your job done. So my advice on that is to be vigilant and be cautious, but don't be scared because you're just going to freak yourself out and depress yourself. And you want to come home to your family, which leads me into my next tip. Next tip is to communicate with your family. All right. As much as you can, make sure you call home, you know, talk to your kids, talk to your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your spouse, because they're going to keep you motivated and kind of kind of remind you of why you're doing what you need to do. Because at the end of the day, our job is to protect the people that we love. And the people we love live in the United States or, or live in a different country that we want to protect. So you want to make sure you communicate and you communicate effectively. You don't want to be throwing the name, the blame game and trying to blame people for stuff that's going on or complaining all the time. You don't want to be telling them operation security stuff or telling them stuff that's actually going on where you at because a lot of that stuff is secret information. So... But what you do want to do is ensure that your family know you love them and that everything is okay. Because when they, you start freaking out as a service member, it's going to start freaking them out. And you don't really want that to happen. So make sure you communicate and effectively with your family. That's my last tip for arrival. Uh, actually, my last tip is money. But that's a whole nother topic that I'm going to get into right now. So, y'all know I wouldn't be Big Bro Dre if I ain't talking about money. Duh. So, when you deploy, you have what's called your combat tax zone exclusion, right? And this has been a concept that's been around since about, I think, World War II when I did the research. And what it is, is the first $80,000 of your money that you accrue when you're deployed is going to be tax-free. So you're not going to pay federal taxes on it. Now, different states have different state uh, statutes and different state regulations that um, tax exclusions, right? So Different states do that. So I don't know all the ones for the states, but I know I'm a, I'm a resident of Florida as far as taxes go, so I don't pay state taxes anyway. But I know that you don't pay federal taxes when you're deployed on any money that is basic pay, imminent danger pay, hostile fire pay, uh, any any school or leave awards, uh, any, any adjustments that are related to your combat zone, you don't pay any taxes on that stuff. For example, my very first deployment in 2005, I was stationed in, I can't say the actual post where I was stationed in, but it was in the country of Iraq. So while I was there, I re-enlisted, which is tax-free. I re-enlisted for a bonus and I received $20,000 bonus. Because I re-enlisted in a combat zone, 
that bonus was tax free. So instead of them, the United States taxing that freaking 26 or 27 percent or whatever they tax back in the States, I got the whole 20 tax free lump sum in my account. So those is one of those. That's one of the perks of being deployed and and, and accruing money. Not to mention all of that money that you don't pay in tax, you don't have to pay it back. So it's it's your money. You get to keep it. So I think this last deployment, I was making probably a, a little under uh, an additional thousand dollars a month just based on not paying taxes. So I would say that's one of the perks. A few more things that you can do to maximize your your uh, savings is you can cut back a little bit on online spending. I know it, it's it's kind of, uh, what do you call it? It's catchy, you wanna, you wanna spend all your money, you got Amazon, click up a button, you can buy whatever you want. If you take it easy on your online spending, you'll save a lot of money, all right? Because it's just so convenient to do so. Another thing you can do is invest in what's called the Savings Deposit Program, all right? It's uh, short, it's SDP, right? So the Savings Deposit Program is a program that the Army has where when you're deployed, they'll allow you to save ten thousand dollars, and that ten thousand dollars is going to up to ten thousand dollars is what I meant. That ten thousand dollars is going to accrue ten percent annually. So ten percent of ten thousand dollars is one thousand dollars. So you all you got to do is pretty much save ten thousand dollars, and you get one thousand dollars back. And it's the same if you save nine hundred. If you save nine thousand dollars, you get nine hundred dollars back. So ten percent you're going to get regardless, and it's guaranteed. So that's a good plan. I did that on like two or three of my deployments when I had the money to do it. So it works for what you needed to do. And it's, it's a perfect way to go ahead and just make $1,000 for free pretty much. At the end of your time, you come back and you get that money back as soon as you get, get home. So that's something good you can look into if you deploy it. Right? Another thing that I always forget about deployments because I'm so damn spoiled and used to it is that when you're deployed, you don't have you still receive your BAH as a, as a uh, married person or a person and staff sergeant and above. And you still receive your basic um, subsistence allowance. So your uh, BAS, I think that's what it's called. You still receive that money. And that money's supposed to be for food, right? But your, your food is free. You get to eat at the dining facility. So married or single or whatever, when you're deployed, you can eat at the dining facility for free. It's ridiculous how much money that saves over a year. I think I did a chart on it last year. And I want to say I saved about $1,800 extra a year just eating at the defect instead of eating out every week. I might have ate out once a month and I still was able to save that much money of BAS, just just BAS, or just food money to, to just by eating at the dining facility. The food is pretty decent too. They, they make sure they take care of you. They have like steak and shrimp and crab legs and all kind of crap when, you, uh, when you're deployed. They want to make sure your food is good. So that's one idea you can use to save more money while you're deployed. Okay, so this last uh, tip is in case you do survive deployment, right? Let's say you make it all the way through your 9, 12, or 15 months or whatever you got to do. Maybe 6 if you're lucky, right? You make it all the way through that. The first thing you need to do is prepare yourself to come home, okay? Things are going to be different. Your family's going to be different. Your dog is going to be different. Your kids are going to be, you're going to be different. So you're going to come home with a different appreciation for, for yourself because you're going to be so used to spending time away from your family that you, you get to know yourself in a different way than you did before. Uh, your family is going to change because your, your spouse and your kids have been taking care of themselves with, without you. So when you get home, you can't expect them to automatically conform to what, what your rules or your regulations are, what you've been doing while you were gone. It, you can't do it because they've been without you for so long that they've gotten used to being without you. So the first thing you need to do is just prepare your mind and your body. Prepare yourself to come home. A lot of people, like like me, when, I, when I'm about to come home, I just try to get my mind in the mindset that, hey, my spouse is taking care of everything she needs to take care of without me. I'm going to I'm going to ease myself into coming back to my family. I'm going to ease myself into it. I'm not just going to jump in and start changing stuff or however she had my closet. I ain't going to just start throwing stuff the way I want it. I'm going to ease myself into that. And it usually takes a, about a month, maybe two months. All right. So the first thing you want to do is just make sure that you're preparing yourself for the changes that happen while you were away. Uh, the longer deployments, the, the, the more changes. So you're going to see maybe maybe your spouse got a new job. 
Maybe your kid went from middle school to high school. Things have changed since you were gone, so you need to prepare your mind for that. Prepare your mind to discipline yourself to not spend all your damn money. Don't do what I did my first deployment. So I got the bonus, and when I came in the Army, I had a bonus. So I still had money from that bonus, and then I got another bonus when I deployed. So what I did was I was like, shit. I just came back from a 12, 13 month deployment. I want to go party. So I went down to Miami with, with about $15,000 and I spent 10 of it in like five days in Miami. Now I had the time of my life. I'm not even going to lie to you. It was like one of the best times I ever had in my life. But it was a gratuitous waste of money. And it probably was the dumbest monetary decision I ever made in my life, right? So I caution you. It's going to be tempting for you to go on and blow your money, especially if you're 18, 19 years old and you got you got $50,000 in the bank. You're going to want to go blow the shit. But you got to think about your future, too, and think about what you can have in the future. So that's my advice on just not blowing your money. And last but completely not least is prepare your mental capacities for actually coming back, right? If the military is offering you mental assistance or offering you some type of, uh, you know, psychological assistance. Take take the assistance because whether you know it or not, you you have changed. Certain things that you're going to experience when you're deployed are things that you're just not going to do on a regular basis. Like you, you're not you're not seeing explosions every day uh, unless you live in a in a, in a hard torn area like maybe Chicago. You're not seeing gunfights and, and, and people shooting every day. You're not living in a in a prison bunk room with with ten other people in a room sleeping on one of the top beats. It's, it's not normal. Like the things that we do as military service members are not normal. But because we're military, we tend to normalize it. So if they offer you the psychological help and you need to talk to somebody, please, man, help yourself out and go talk to somebody. Don't just blow it off. You know what I mean? Make sure you get the help that you need because. You don't want to. You don't want to sacrifice your mental capacity trying to be tough. Like, t take the help, and that's my last tip. And if you sat through this whole video, I appreciate your support. Make sure you don't forget. Please don't forget because these videos take some time to make. So, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. And make sure you tell your friends and your family about me if you like the content that you hear. If you want some additional content that, you, that you're not seeing, hit me up. A lot of people hit me up and they tell me they want to hear stuff. Like, I, I got at least three to four. No, I'm lying. I got like six emails about deployments alone because a lot of YouTubers, just because of the time, not, it's nothing against, you know, what their job is or what they do. It just happens to be the time that I came in, I had a lot of deployments. Like, I ain't volunteer for none of them shits. I actually just happened to come in during the time when deployments were, were prevalent. So a lot of YouTubers that, who are doing YouTube right now, a lot of them haven't deployed. Or a lot of them may have only deployed one time. And I deployed four times to combat zones. And I did a tour in Korea, for, as you can see from my videos a few years ago. So if there's content that you want, shoot me an email at justdrejr at gmail.com. Um, I'm going to open up my Instagram page sooner or later. And, I, and then I, you can shoot me a, you know, a DM on, on IG. But for now, thank you for your support. I appreciate you. I appreciate the comments. I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the subscriptions. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.